Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up in today's show. A mysterious vanishing in the desert of Utah has now inspired the disappearance of Everett Roos. A theatrical rock performance, its creator Emmanuel Tellier is here to tell us more. A look back at the career of jazz legend Al Jarreau. The award-winning musician has died at the age of 76. And we take a look at a new opera opening here in Paris as the young Fantasio takes to the stage at the Théâtre de Châtelet. Well, I'm joined by director, musician and journalist Emmanuel Tellier. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Now, your current show is entitled The D Disappearance of Everett Roos. Just who is this person, this character that we're searching for in the performance? Uh, first thing we need to say is that it's a true story. Everything we are singing about, telling about is based on true facts. So there are a lot of archives about this young chap. This young chap was born in uh, California in 1914. And at the age of 15, 16, he started going to the wilderness, uh, canyons, deserts in, the, in Utah, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico. And uh, he was basically a wanderer, wasn't very good at school. He was a very clever kid, I, I think, but didn't like school. So he was always going in the wild for a few months and then more and more longer times uh, further away and basically disappeared at the age of 20. So this is November 90, uh, 1934, completely vanished, no explanation, nothing. So I think it's a very moving story because we don't know what happened to him. And it's also a very strong and fascinating story and very interesting for the journalist that I am because we have all his documents, we have his diaries, and he, he had a very, very strong relationship with his mother and father. They would write to each other about every day or every week, letters, even when he was very far away in a, in a desert, he would always find the time to write a letter, tell them what he was doing, his emotions, his feelings. Sometimes he got depressed, sometimes he was very up, very, very uh, moved by the beauty, and he was always telling stories. And we have these letters. The, the, the parents uh, died in the early 60s, but they gave all the letters, all the diaries to a, a library. And this is what I used to make the work. OK, so it's his story and your story as well. Let's get yeah. a taste of that. This is a short clip of the disappearance of Everett Roos. A windstorm sprang up and the burrow sat down. Ah. A water hole I expected to have been full was empty. <laughs> So we can see that it's a live performance that mixes lots of elements, multimedia exactly. elements, music, theatre, dialogue, documentary. Yeah. Where do you start? Do you start with the script or the music in your creation? I actually started with the music because I came across that story three years ago. I've got very close friends who live in Salt Lake City and they have a, a house in Torrey. Torrey is in southern Utah, very close, not very close, but kind of close to Bryce Canyon. So this is the region, Zion Canyon, Bryce Canyon and then Monument Valley. So we were going on hikes basically every day. And my friend called David Murrell told me about Everett Roos. So we got back home at their place in Torrey, southern Utah, and there was a guitar. So I just very simply started playing the guitar with no special idea in mind. And the books, I had two books. There are two books about Everett Roos with the correspondence. So I was just going through pages and singing. And Without any effort, like a month later, I had the songs. The so music. this was the beginning. The music got you there. Now, the play is a multimedia production, blending music and dialogue, but it's also bilingual, in a sense, mixing French and English. Let's hear from actress Jane Morley on how she came to the story. Normally, I'm a visual artist. I'm a photographer, filmmaker, writer. Uh, I've never acted before, so it was all of that and the fact that I work with true stories as well that led me to, to uh, want to work in something like this. So as we see, there's a mix of language here and the subtitle of the play is An American Story. What would you say makes it characteristically American? Well, it's the, the 
what the Americans call the great outdoors, you know, we don't have that one in French. We say randonnée, marche. I think it's beautiful that they have a name for that. There's a really strong love and respect for nature. Obviously, not everybody's got it. The new president of America hasn't got that. Some, is, some of his friends are really, are really ready to make bad damage to the, to the land to get more oil, petrol, tar sand. But there's another America, and that's the America we are talking about and singing about. They, these are the people who love the land, who love the beauty. Everett Roos and these people were also always trying to be close to the Indians. I think they felt guilty to the Native Americans, the Indian. So it's all that. That makes it very American. It happens between 1930 and 34. So it's obviously the Great Depression. So we're also talking about Dorothy Lange. Mm. Uh, all the writers we talked about that. That mm -hmm. makes it all very American. It seems old. It's 80 years ago, but it's to me it's very young. It's like yesterday. It's only 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we should really learn from that story and learn something from it. And all underscored, of course, with this music. Now we're moving to a reference in American music now. Jazz legend Al Jarreau died last week in Los Angeles at the age of 76. The musician won seven Grammys over a 50-year career, one of the few artists to pick up awards in three separate categories, jazz, pop and R&B. Sanam Chantier takes a look back at his career. Al Jarreau, a versatile American singer. One of few artists to have won Grammys in different vocal categories, jazz, pop and R&B. He started singing when he was only four years old in the church where his father was a pastor. He graduated in psychology, but by the late 60s he had quit his day job and embarked on a nightclub career. In 1971, Jarrow was finally heard by the right people. They were taken aback by his jazz vocals. If there's any music that is really kind of our own, it's this stuff that we call jazz. I mean, we got blues and country too, but jazz, very special thing that's ours and embraced all over the world. So. Eternal love. Earlier in February, Jarrow retired from touring after more than five decades. His final tour was here in France. Even in his final days in hospital, according to his son, he was doing what he loved best, singing to his nurses. Emmanuel, as well as your creative work on stage, you've also worked extensively in journalism, music journalism specifically, mm -hmm. for some very high profile publications here in France. Who are the most memorable stars that you've met? Well, wow. I would say David Bowie. Got to say David Bowie and also obviously his passing last year made us all very sad. Wonderful guy, really, really nice. You know, sometimes you meet big stars and they're nice, but you know, it's like, I'm nice. He was <laughs> really nice. Very interested in the arts, painting. I, had, I was lucky enough to interview him twice. And I think David Bowie is the, the most incredible artist not only that I've met but that we have had the joy to meet all of us through his music I think it was a marvelous marvelous guy mm -hmm. and working in that scene and ha seeing how it's evolved over the last 20 years or so what would you say is the most striking or exciting development in music well definitely the internet I think the internet is wonderful but it's two things it's a, it's a beautiful thing and it's also a danger, obviously, for anybody who's got to make a living with money. You've got to get income, so everything cannot be free. There's a value to things. So, yeah, the Internet is fabulous because it makes uh, contact so much easier. Actually, if people listen to us are interested in the Everett Roos project, please write to me. Write to 49 Swimming Pools. That's the name of the band through Facebook, through Twitter. Write to me because I'm trying to tell the story of Everett Roos to share it with as many people as we can. And obviously the internet helps for that. And indeed the documentary that you're working on about Everett Roos will be available. I want to do a documentary. I'm doing a documentary which will be ready at the end of this year and I would like to make it free, go on the internet for everybody. I'm a storyteller, I met that story, it's like a gift, so I want to share it with everybody. Don't need to make money with it, it's not about money, it's about sharing the beautiful story of a young 20-year-old artist who was very ahead of his time, very aware of uh, the need to protect the earth, nature, 
a, a young fine artist. He disappeared. We don't know what happened to him, but he's still with Now us. Now he lives on. He's very much with us today. Show. Emmanuel, thank you so much for joining us today. The disappearance of Everett Roos is on at the 104 here in Paris and then on tour in France. We're finishing with a different style of music now, a production first staged more than 140 years ago. Jacques Offenbach's Fantasio follows the young student who takes on the role of court jester, all in the pursuit of Princess Elspeth. It's a light-hearted meditation on love, marriage and obligation, and it's currently on stage at Paris's Théâtre de Châtelet. We'll leave you with a clip. Remember to check out our website and you can also keep up with Encore on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Shnur Kezri owns a beauty salon in Arbil, the capital of Iraqi Kurdistan. But two days a month, the young Kurdish woman from Iran comes to this IDP camp to offer her services to women who have lost everything. In this makeshift salon, she provides beauty treatments like haircuts and waxing. Most of the women left their home in Mosul, forsaking most of their belongings. Tens of thousands have fled the city since Iraqi forces launched a massive offensive against the Islamic State group in October.